Hello from Giant City State Park in South Central Illinois. I am starting out on the Stone Fort Trail. It's a, supposed to have a bit of a climb. I am climbing next to what I assume at other times of the year would have a river flowing down it. But as I've discovered everywhere this year or this fall, nothing has water in it. So I'm on a bluff that sticks out over here. And this wall coming up through here would kind of create a barrier behind this bluff, preventing anybody from coming th through unknown. The wall used to be much taller. It was built somewhere between 600 and 900 AD. Unfortunately, at some point, people dismantled it for building materials for other purposes. And the CCC kind of tried to rebuild as much as they could, although it doesn't look like there's much here now. There's about 240 feet of wall. And these pieces were obviously carried up here and placed. And we get to here and we hit the bluff edge. And the trail is really just this loop around the bluff. Call it a fort is a very, it's a Eurocentric idea um, where anytime we think you build a wall and you have something like this on a bluff, you're fortifying something. Well, there's no evidence that there was a need for a fort or anything like that here. So the general purpose of it is still unknown, but there's no evidence that a fort was needed here. And it's not the only one in the area. There are others in the Shawnee area, as in the Southern Illinois, Shawnee National Forest area of Illinois. This one just happens to be the longest. And that's why it's extra notable. In the dry season, that's about a 15 minute hike, if that less for some families more if you got water to play in not this year now there are a ton of day use picnic areas along the main road here um, and this one happens to be across from a really cool little section of trail here and go explore. That's quite the hideaway cave. Well, I'm now inside that cave. There's the entrance. I tell you, if you're hot on a cool, hot on a hot day, this one offers some cooling capabilities. I have no idea how high up that goes. That's looking straight up. It doesn't go very deep, but it's a great shelter. Ooh. I didn't bring my headlamp with me, but that's quite this little slot there. I wonder how far that goes. I'm not daring enough to get in there, not without better light.
So at all the trailheads, they have these nice, simple little signs that give you an idea of the length of the hike, how long they think it'll take, and a little idea of what you're going to find. But you got to get each point to find that. The, the trail map doesn't tell you. Forest Therapy Trail. Take your time. Enjoy. believe I'm standing on a dry waterfall again. Water would come down from both sides here and drop. This just shows what happens when you try to control nature and make it your own and not just work with it. It's fall of 2022. This is the pond that they want to have a pier in. This is why we can't have nice things. I only found those three spots, markers on that trail. I found a couple posts that were empty I don't know if it's that's not completed or that people ripped them off. I wanted to try that relaxation trail. I walked the whole thing. It takes you five minutes if you're not giving instructions on what to do along the way. Let's try something else. So they have a lodge and they have cabins associated with the lodge. These cute little cabins. And then between the cabins and the lodge is one of the weirdest looking water towers I've ever seen, but it does have an observation deck, so up we go. Does get you up high enough. So dawn to dusk means you can be up here for sunrise and sunset. Roll out of bed out of your cabin or out of the lodge. Come on up and go back to bed afterwards. But that's just weird. Well, that's different. Basic concept is there's a hole up there. That's north. South is behind here, and at midday, when the sun is just right, shines through, it's that one at the beginning of the summer, that one in the fall and the spring, and winter's way out here. And there's my north mark. Well, let's try a bigger trail this time. See what giant city really means and the namesake for the park. And this one feels like the CCC might have had a hand 
in getting us into this one. So one thing that I haven't loved about this park, it's vast. There's a wide distance from point A to point B, from designated trail to designated trail. There's only roads between them, and they are steep and climbing, which means the only real way to get around this park is by driving from spot to spot. There's a phrase I haven't seen before. Visitor included trails. I've always called those crowdsourced trails. We'll stick to the main trail today. section with the rock overhead is called Batman Squeeze and I went the wrong way. So the whole idea is you squeeze down to it but I started at the skinny end and went to the wide end. So this is one of those alternative trails but I can't ignore this. A great little shelter here. This shelter comes with a, oh my, it's gotten really bad shelter. Goes in here that apparently goes through because it is, there's a cold wind coming from in here. How far back that goes. There's definitely a breeze coming out of it. side too. So this piece is floating. It's like a daylight coming in over here. Have you ever heard the term widow maker when it comes to camping? When you set up a tent, look up. That would be a widow maker. Right wind, right conditions, that uh, comes down and hits you. So that's Giant City Trail, Giant City State Park. Trailhead signs at an hour, more like 45 minutes, and there were other families that were doing it faster than that, with little kids. 
All right, I got one more trail to try and a feeling I'm gonna have some stairs on this one, Devil's Stand Table. Apparently, this trail offers some bouldering. So you have those crash pads with them. So apparently this is the trail with rock climbing allowed. There are climbers all over up and down here. Now I'm underneath that trail that was supposed to be the relaxation trail. That's up there somewhere. So this isn't really a loop. I guess it's an out and back. If you really try, you can get up to that trail and really try and come back down. Probably easier if you're a rock climber. Oh, I now know what our destination is. It's this stand table up there where you got the top rock is a little more resilient to weather than the rocks underneath so that little bit up there survives everything around it erodes very much like hoodoos and things like that and this is kind of reminiscent of that spot in devil in up in the dells where there's a famous picture of a guy jumping across onto a rock like that. And now you can go and watch a dog do it on a regular basis. So this was a less organized trail than some of the others. It's really just got you to this point. So you can see that spire. It's really not that far from one to the other. Get up there, it probably doesn't seem that scary to go across, but don't do it. Now there's a ton of this rock overhang here to explore. Continues way down and around the corner over there. It's a long ways down. There's some people way down there too. You can really see how oh, this whole section just fell off over here. And it just piled up down here. So that's Devil Stand Table Trail. Just getting you up so you can see that rock formation amongst these other bluffs that are pretty cool. With a great big overhang section there to explore. And if you're a rock climber, apparently this is the hill for you, or the bluff for you. So this is a very, very brief look at the campground. As you can see, it is a definitely RV friendly. It's well shaded. Plenty of trees, but no cover between your neighbors. It's very much like an RV park. One other thing that about this state park, and I felt the same way over at Starved Rock. It's very similar. You have this beautiful lodge that's in the heart of everything, and then you have the campground. Way, way out that feels like it has nothing to do with the rest of the park. There are no trails from the campground. Not even just a trail that's only at the campground, but all those wonderful trails, they're like two miles away. So if you were someone like myself, and if I was traveling with my, with my wife, she likes to stay put at the campground, and I want to go hike the trails. I can't do that here, because I would need to move our home our whole world over there and she has to come with because I would leave her with nothing at the campground. Beautiful drive out here though. Just has nothing to do with the rest of the park. So thanks for coming along on this journey. That was my quick tour of Giant City State Park and a variety of its trails. Good chunk of them and a little brief tour of of the campground so you get a sense of what the campground's like. I hope it was useful. I hope you got something out of it. Please let me know in the comments if you've been here, especially if you've been here when there's water flowing, because it looks like it could be a lot of different waterfalls and things here, but I have no idea if they're normally flowing. So let others know if that's the case. I hope to see you on the next one. Get on out there.